by and large, modern English comes from a garble of different cultures. So because the British Isles are islands, it makes sense that traditionally they've been inhabited by seafarers and pirates. These words are such mainstays in English that it's probable you've used some of them today. All set? I'll get underway with some straightforward words and phrases. <laughs> All right. So because sailing was a lot of drudgery, a lot of our words we're talking about work come from sailing. Maybe you wish your boss would give you some leeway, which is the ability of a boat to maneuver while sailing downwind. Or perhaps you need a lay day. Or you need the opposite to get cracking and forge ahead. And I know that every single one of you has made a purchase. To make purchase literally means to seize goods by robbery or pillage. <laughs> so think of that the next time you're filling out a PO. <laughs> All right, and if you want a reckoning of how many nautical terms I'm using, I will have a slide at the end, but be sure to take them with a grain of salt. <laughs> You'll have to debunk them yourselves. So to go off on a different tack, how many of you have ever been seasick? If you have been, you'll know why a lot of our words for feeling blue come from sailing. So down in the doldrums, the doldrums are a part of the ocean near the equator where the southeast trade winds meet the northeast trade winds, causing a lull where many ships become becalmed, which is very frustrating when you're trying to get somewhere. Meaning the same thing, but being uh, something different in nautical terms, under the weather, you should probably batten down the hatches. <laughs> so feeling cranky and messy conditions and close quarters often led to some drama on board a ship. Maybe you know somebody who is aloof, which comes from a Middle Dutch word meaning to windward. If a ship sails to windward, they are leaving the other ships in their wake. Or perhaps you've been snubbed. To snub a line is to wrap it around a cleat or a block, preventing it from running freely. Hopefully that didn't take the wind out of your sails. <laughs> now there were perks to being a sailor. Three square meals a day, a ration of grog, which was rum mixed with water to sanitize it. So, <laughs> sanitize the rum. If you're groggy, you probably had too much rum to grog to drink. Or maybe you're footloose or a drifter or three sheets to the wind. These are all words for being drunk that come from sailing. <laughs> Now, to go off on a different tack again, how about these two seemingly unrelated homonyms, fast and fasten? If you make fast a line, you tighten your sails, you can go faster. OK, now, pipe down, all you linguists out there. Before you sound off on me, I'm overreaching, and I may have missed the mark. <laughs> uh, that is pure speculation, so if you give me some slack, I promise to toe the line and keep everything above board from now on. <laughs> so to carry on, this one is also somewhat speculative. Sailing from England to India, it was very hot in the Suez Canal, so the port side of the boat was cooler. And on the way home, the inverse was true, of course. So a posh berth was more expensive. Now, the gun deck on a boat was the most private part of a boat. A son of a gun was probably conceived there. <laughs> but you had to be careful not to get caught or you might let the cat out of the bag. If there was room to swing a cat, the cat of nine tails, of course, that is. Are you guys taken aback by how many nautical words you use every day come from sailing? I've plumbed the depths, but this is not even half the words that I logged. <laughs> so, hopefully this puts a new slant on things. And if you keep a weather eye open, you can stay abreast of all the nautical words that you use in everyday life. Thank you. <laughs>